Hello, it's Mr. Primer here. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be learning about ionic compounds. So first of all, what is a compound? So a compound is when you have two or more elements that come together to become one single unit. So an example might be hydrogen and oxygen, which come together to form water, H2O, or maybe you have sodium and chlorine that come together to become sodium chloride or table salt. Uh, so that's what a compound is. And the two main types that we're gonna be studying this year are covalent, also called molecular. So that's when you have two or more nonmetals, so like CO2, for example, or what we're talking about today, ionic compounds, and that's when you have one metal and one nonmetal. So an example, like I just said, is sodium chloride. So how do you know what is a metal and what is not a metal? Well, if you look at the periodic table, everything on the left-hand side is a metal. So everything in blue here is a metal. And everything on the right-hand side is a non-metal. So it's pretty easy to tell what's a metal and what's a non-metal. And every time you have a compound that has one metal and one non-metal, you know it's an ionic compound. Okay, so there's some properties of ionic compounds. Uh, they always form crystals. Uh, so they have a crystal structure, uh, like you can see in this diagram right here. They're also hard and brittle, so they're not malleable. You can't bend them. Uh, they have uh, they conduct electricity when they're dissolved in water. So an example would be salt water. And they also have high boiling and melting points. Okay, so how do they form? So to understand how they form, we have to understand uh, when are elements happy? When are they nice and happy, just like this guy right here? He's pretty happy. Oh, he has one eye. That's not too happy. Oh my goodness. Okay, wow. There we go. Believe me, trust me, he's happy. He is happy. Okay, so how can an element get happy like this person right here? That's the question. And the answer is when they have a full set of outer electrons. So a full outer shell of electrons. So here we have some Bohr-Rutherford diagrams that show the electrons of an element. And you can see the outer shell of them right here. So for instance, in this first group, they have one electron in its outer shell. The second group have two electrons in their outer shell and so on. Until you get to these ones over here, the noble gases, they have a full set of electrons in their outer shell. And we call those electrons valence electrons. So as you can see, the maximum in the first row is two. And then the maximum in the next two rows are eight. So if you have eight electrons in your outer shell, you are happy. So how do you get happy? Well, the answer is right here. It's kind of mean. The non-metal will steal the electron from the metal. Uh, and so why would they do that? Well, let's look over here. So chlorine is so close to being happy. It has seven electrons in its outer shell. So it only needs one more electron to become happy. So what will happen is it will steal an electron from a metal and it will become happy. Okay, so what's gonna happen? So the chlorine is going to steal an electron from the sodium, so put an extra chlorine right here. Now it's happy, there's a full set of electrons, and the sodium just lost this electron, so we'll get rid of that. And now you can look at them, they're both happy. And so that's why they come together, uh, and they can make each other happy. It's a beautiful story. Uh, so the formula would be NaCl because you need one of each in order for the outer shells to become happy. Okay, let's look at another example. Example two, uh, magnesium fluoride. So we have magnesium and we have the element fluorine that come together. And as you can see right here, magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell and fluorine has seven. So this is gonna be a little a bit different. So let's uh, start on this. So uh, we'll get um, fluorine. We'll first start off by stealing an electron because remember it is the non-metal. So it's going to steal one electron. So one of them's happy now. So that's good. But we're still going to need something else. So what we're going to need is another fluorine to come in there. So now if another fluorine comes in there, uh, so this one we already had here. So as one is happy, this one's happy. Okay, and now Magnesium doesn't have any of these outer ones, and so it's happy, happy too. So 
This fluorine has a full set of electrons. This one has a full set of electrons. And magnesium has a full set of electrons because its outer shell now is eight electrons. And so that's how you know it's a proper uh, ratio is if they are all happy. So we can see right here, the formula would be MgF2 because you have one magnesium and two fluorines. So MgF2. Okay, we're talking about ionic compounds, so we need to talk about the word ion. What is an ion? So an ion is a charged atom. So when these elements start off, when they're by their, themselves, they're not charged, they're neutral. I mean, they have the same number of protons as electrons. But when they come together and react, then they're gonna be charged because magnesium loses two electrons, so it's gonna become positive, and fluorine gains an electron, so it's gonna become negative. So in this case right here, we can see that um, magnesium will have a charge of plus two because it loses two electrons. So if you lose something that's negative, you become positive. And fluorine will have a charge of negative one because it gains one single electron. So you can, as you can see right here, that's what we'd call the ion charge. So the ion charge of magnesium would be plus two and the ion charge of fluoride would be negative one. So that's what an ion is. So anytime you're dealing with ion, an ionic compound, uh, you're gonna be dealing with ions. And we also call a positive ion, we call that a cation. So magnesium is a cation. And we call a negative ion an anion. So fluorine is a negative ion, so it's an anion. So an ionic compound is always made up of a cation and an anion. Okay, and as you can see, uh, there's a relationship on the periodic table. So every atom in this group right here is gonna have a charge of plus one because you can see they all have one electron in its valence shell, so it's gonna get rid of that. All these ones will have a charge of plus two. These ones will have a charge of plus three. Uh, these ones, have a charge of four, it could go either way. We're not gonna deal with that right now. And then if you start from this side, all these noble gases over here in this group are all gonna have a charge of zero because they have a full outer shell. These ones are gonna have a charge of negative one, negative two, and negative three. Okay, so um, let's do another example. Let's look at lithium oxide. And this time, we're not gonna look at the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, we're just gonna look at the periodic table. So the first step is to look at what the charge is of lithium and oxygen. So let's go to the periodic table, and here's lithium in the first group right here, the alkali metals. So it's gonna have a charge of plus one. And then oxygen's over here, so remember all these have zero, these ones have negative one, and these ones have negative two. So oxygen will have a charge of negative two. So let's put that in right now. When you're writing uh, the charges of ions, you put them on top of the element symbol. So remember, uh, lithium has a charge of plus one, and then oxygen has a charge of negative two. And now to come up with the ratio, the formula, an easy way to do that is just to cross them over. So this number is gonna go here, and this number is gonna go here, except we're not gonna put the positive and the negatives. So here it'll be Li2, O1. And because it's one, we don't have to put it. It's automatically assumed that it is one there. Okay, let's try out some of these examples. I want you to pause the video and try them out on your own, and then we can take them up together. Okay, so hopefully uh, you tried them out. Let's go over them together. So the first one is potassium nitride. So we're gonna look at the symbol it, for potassium is K, and it has a charge of plus one because it's in the first group. So we'll go K, and then it, because it's a plus one charge, we can just put a single plus sign. And then nitrogen is over here and has a charge of, let's see, these are zero, these are negative one, negative two, and negative three. So we'll have a charge of negative three. And then we can just simply cross them. So K, the final answer will be K3 and just N. Okay, so that'll be the good answer. The proper formula for potassium nitride, it's the only way those two elements can come together and form a compound. So that's the proper formula. Okay, now beryllium chloride. So beryllium's over here, and it's in the second group, so there's a charge of plus two. So Be with a charge of two. 
and then it comes together with chloride. So here's a chloride ion. So these are zero, these are negative one. So chlorine is going to have a charge of negative one. We can just put a negative sign. And so the formula for that will be Be2Cl. And you notice that I always put the numbers for the formulas at the bottom, they're subscripts. So that's important, where the charges of the ions always go at the top. Okay, last one, magnesium oxide. So we're going to have Mg. And you can see that it's in the second group right here, uh, the alkaline earth metals. It's going to have a charge of plus two. So here we go. And then oxygen. So here, uh, oxygen's here. So these all have zero, negative one, negative two. Okay, then we can cross them over. Mg2O2. Except that's actually not the formula, the final formula. What we have to do for ionic compounds is reduce them. So the final ratio will actually just simply be MgO. So remember that's important for ionic compounds, um, not for molecular or also called covalent compounds. Those you keep the ratios as they are, but these you always reduce it to the lowest form. So that'll be MgO. And the reason for that is is that these ionic compounds are crystals so we're not dealing with just two atoms all together uh, by themselves we're dealing with a whole crystal made up of tons of atoms but the ratio will be one magnesium for every oxygen so we'll just say mgo instead of mg2o2 so that's important for ionic compounds okay i hope that video was interesting and i hope you have a good day